Hi everybody, I'm Dada, and with me this week is Helen. And today is Friday, February 9th, and here's what's been happening inside LHS this week. We are fully into the third term of this school year, which started back on January 24th. Last week, report cards came out on report card night and in seminar. If you still haven't seen your report card from the first semester, check your PowerSchool account or talk to your seminar teacher. The third term runs until the beginning of April. If you are a senior and have not finished your FAFSA SORM yet, next week, Gear Up is holding FAFSA makeup sessions from Monday, February 12th through Friday the 16th in room B226. Be sure to bring your parents' financial information with your W-2 personal form and the blue documents. There will be staff and computers to help you complete your FAFSA form for college financial aid. Students in LHS art classes have always done outstanding work that has been recognized locally and statewide. This year is no different. Meet LHS senior Michelle Collado. We are here with Michelle Collado, an art student in the upper school. Tell us about the Scholastic Art Award you recently won. Um, well, I recently won an award for my artwork named Distant, and it won a gold key. Tell us about the work you entered in last year. Well, the work I entered in last year was this piece. Um, this piece is named Self-Awareness. Um, it basically means like whenever like you're put into like a host not a hostile situation, but like kind of like when you're in new settings, you kind of tend to show your true colors, whether you like it or not. And in this piece, I have like the model kind of like ripping um, the colors off of his skin, kind of to represent like like just showing your true colors and like he's kind of in pain in this photo um, to represent like him not only hurting himself but hurting other well not only hurting other people but hurting himself. What is it about art that gets you going? Um, I've always drawn when I was little and it became like kind of like a habit and I guess like it was more like an outlet and it was something that I was good at and I took pride in. Tell us about your plans after graduation and how will art fit into your future? Um, I'm actually gonna major in art. I've applied to three art colleges, which is School of Visual Arts in New York, Mass Art, and Rhode Island School of Design. And I'm just gonna see like where art takes me from there. All right, thanks for talking to us and congratulations. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Congratulations to Michelle and all of the other LHS art students who participated in this year's Scholastic Arts Competition. The LHS robotics team, the Gearheads, have been working on their robot for this year's first robotics competition since the second week of January. They are designing, building, and testing out the, ro the robot three nights a week and on Saturdays, getting ready for competition, which takes place at the beginning of March. The team, the mentors, and faculty advisors have been working hard getting the robot ready to ship it sometime in the next three weeks. If you are interested in finding out more about the gearhead, see Ms. Heredia in the 10th grade academy or upper school science teacher, Mr. G, who is located in the C building. In Leicester Sports this week, indoor track has finished the winter season and now it is on to the MVC championship, which takes place today and the states, which will happen next Friday the 16th. And congratulations go out to Rodelia Kingsley, who set two new school records in track in both the 600 meter race and the one mile. She is one of the Lancer athletes going to the MVC and state championships. Congratulations to Rodelia Kingsley. And then boys basketball, the team continues to move closer to the playoffs. Last Friday night, the Lancers beat Haverhill, and earlier this week on Tuesday night, they beat Drake. Tonight, the Lancers go against Crosstown rivals Central Catholic here at home. The varsity game begins at 7 p.m., but it should be packed, so get here early. And while we have had our share of snow days and delayed openings this winter, it is nothing in comparison to a weather event people in Massachusetts remembered this week. This week was the 40th anniversary of a winter weather event known as the Blizzard of 78. It was such a powerful storm with more than 27 inches of snow and hurricane force winds that went on for two and a half days, a storm that people still think about today. It affected life in the area so much that most people who lived throughout it have a story to tell about it, including the fact that there was no, so much snow that many schools in eastern Massachusetts were closed for nearly two weeks. A storm so powerful that people 40 years later remember it in detail. 
I remember the blizzard of 78. I was about 12 years old. Um, I was living on Andover Street, uh, going to the Kane School. And I remember being out of school like a whole week, or if not more. Um, I remember having to like get the whole community together to shovel. Uh, my grandparents lived down the street, so we were just going together in groups of 5, 10, 15 people from the neighborhood and just shoveling the driveways. And there was no way to put the snow, so we didn't know where to put it. We are trying to find, throw it, walking with the shovel and walking several yards to put it in piles. I remember walking to school on the streets for a few weeks um, because the snow would, was not melting and uh, there was no way to put it. And then we had February vacation, so um, that's pretty much all I remember. And a lot of you guys don't remember it, but it was definitely a life-changing event. I was a senior at uh, UMass Lowell, and I, it was University of Lowell at the time, and I had a late class that day, and I remember coming out the, the door of the only building, coming out into the parking lot, and it was like getting blasted in the face with ice bullets. It was like the, 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 the snow and ice was coming down sideways, and the wind was really whipping up. And I remember riding home on 495. I lived in Lawrence, and I, uh, South Lawrence, and I was driving home on 495, and a gust of wind came out of nowhere and took the wheel right out of my hand. And, and I, I grabbed it in time, but the whole car went sideways. And I, I knew something was up then. And, you know, back then the weather forecasting wasn't as like it is today. They, they could tell you, you know, a day or two in advance what was going to happen. We really, we knew something was up, but we weren't sure of the details. And, um, and, and the next day when we woke up, it was still, the snow was still coming down. Unbelievable. I mean, you, you got to remember, it was, it snowed for like 32 hours straight, heavy snow. Um, I remember looking across the street at one of my neighbor's houses, another three-decker that, that was across the street from me, and the snow and ice were just stuck to the side of the house. It was almost like it was like it was on the ground, but it was vertical. And... Um, I mean, it, it really came down hard. And we had just gotten like almost two feet of snow the week before. So we get that on top of this. Um, I can remember uh, you weren't allowed to go driving anywhere. No cars were allowed on the road except for emergency services. Lawrence had just switched over from the big snow plow trucks to contractors using pickup trucks. So they were, in effect, they were, they were useless. All there was was a little path going down each street. I remember my mother and I taking a walk down to what was at the time First National in over in the parking lot where, in the far end of the parking lot where um, uh, the registry is, down near the end where the liquor store is, down that side there, there was a First National, taking a sled and walking down there to put the groceries on to walk back home with. Yeah. When I was a kid, I remember... A snowstorm was a snowstorm. It was, you'd probably get maybe a couple of feet of snow. It was no big deal. Ever since the blizzard, though, I remember the blizzard, the big impact was people going to the stores, walking to the stores to get groceries, and there was nothing on the shelves. And that impacted everybody from that point on because now they have a, a prediction of a snowstorm, and it, it, everybody hits the store. The, the stores are mobbed. It wasn't like that before. It's the storm to measure all storms, I mean. The snow we had earlier this week was nothing in comparison to the blizzard of 78, which took place 40 years ago this week. Well, that'll do it for this week inside LHS. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next week.